Welcome to all of you to this very special evening, uh, to tonight's lecture featuring uh, Simon Bro, who's uh, joined us today. I think we're one of your first stops on your tour of Alberta. <laughs> so we're very excited to have you here with us and um, very much looking forward to your talk tonight entitled Reimagining Canada's Future Through the Arts. But just before we bring Monsieur Bro up to the stage, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the Arts and Cultural Management Program, because as most of you know, we are about 35 years old. And I say about because it's actually 36 now, but <laughs> who celebrates 36, right? So we're celebrating 35 tonight. <laughs> And um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about how the program began with some pretty humble beginnings in 1979 and has grown exponentially, particularly I would say in the last 10 to 15 years when we've gone online with a full online cohort and grew from a certificate program, as all of you know, to a diploma program of two years. And now we're working on a BFA proposal for a BFA in arts management, so we're very excited about that. Um, I wanted to uh, actually point out uh, Denise Roy, one of the first uh, chairs of the program, and maybe give her a, a shout out. <laughs> and, and Donna Cardinal was also one of the first chairs, but couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately, but she wanted me to pass on her best to all of you. Um, so I wanted to also uh, just mention that it's funny when you look back in to 1979, what was happening then. Um, Margaret Thatcher had just been elected, the first woman elected prime minister in the UK. Uh, the Sony Walkman was invented in 1979. <laughs> and I'd like you all to know it cost $200 in 1979 uh, money. The snowboard was invented in 1979. And some of you who are much younger will think, what? <laughs> a time before snowboards? Um, Pierre Trudeau was our prime minister in 1979. And uh, Peter Lougheed was, was <laughs> I can guess, of the Progressive Conservative Party was our premier in 1979. So that's how long uh, we've been around. <laughs> Um, so when I was contemplating Monsieur Bro's lecture this evening, I, I got to thinking about how the Canada Council and our own arts and cultural management program have sort of grown up together in a way. Um, while the Canada Council has been committed to funding artists and arts organizations over the years, McEwen has been committed to developing effective and, uh, and, and dedicated arts administrators and managers. And Edmonton's art scene is filled with McEwen alumni who are now the ones managing and leading in arts and culture in this city. And so many of you are here tonight. So tonight is about celebration, celebrating Canada's commitment to art and culture and celebrating McEwen's uh, commitment to the field as well. So I just wanted to do a brief poll. First, if you are a graduate of the program, would you just raise your hand? Let's see how many grads we have here, please. Everybody, okay, well, that's fantastic. And now how about uh, a student? Who is a current student? Aha, that's wonderful. Yes, now of course I knew because I saw you come in. Um, <laughs> But the other people don't know. I always forget that. How about current or past uh, faculty? Yes, a lot of people here. Wonderful. And how about current or past advisory committee members, employers, or field placement supervisors? And you can be in more than one category, obviously. So yes. And that's probably just about everybody who's here. So wonderful, wonderful. And employers and supervisors, uh, watch out. Those current students are coming your way, right? Coming your way very soon. So thank you all so much for your ongoing support of the program, its students and graduates, and um, I really believe that we have had, in all these 35 years, a major influence on this vibrant art scene here in Edmonton. So just a few thank yous before we get going. I need to uh, thank our funders, the Alberta Foundation for the Arts, who I think are not here tonight because of the writ. <laughs> but they still funded our event. Uh, we also received assistance from the uh, Jubilee Auditorium, and particularly from Taryn Cole and Brett Fraser, who are grads of the program and who both work here now. Um, second to our performers and artists tonight, so uh, the merchant poet, Colin Maddy. I think he might just be out here. <laughs> and and uh, the caricaturist, uh, Kathy McMillan. Give her a little hand. You, you may have seen my caricature out there. It's quite a fine caricature, I might say. And uh, Kathy did study at McEwen as well back in the 80s, I have to say that. Uh, the Kevin Castro Trio are terrific musicians where they might have already left, but there they are, great. 
So we have uh, Fred Mack on the alto sax, Kyle Hollins on the acoustic bass, and Kevin Castro on piano. So thank you very much. <clears throat> And the last artist then to speak about tonight is Phineas Flash, who came up with our little, um, I think we should call her Mackie for McEwen. Um, this is our, our mascot for the evening anyway, uh, balloon artist Phineas Flash. Now after the, yeah, let's get right <laughs> Uh, after the lecture tonight and during the reception, uh, both Colin and uh, Kathy will be out in the lobby. So if you'd like to get a caricature or a poem, just go right on down there and get that. I really recommend both of them. And of course, our music will continue as well. So please stay uh, for the reception. Um, I'd also like to thank our volunteers for tonight and perhaps get them to stand if they're here. Denny, Meredith, Michael, Gabby. Rain, Lucille, and Esther, all current students of the program. So thanks, guys. Thank you so much. I didn't miss anyone, did I? <laughs> OK. Um, so now if anyone's tweeting tonight, we're using McEwen uh, U and Yeg Arts and Yeg AACM. So please do uh, if you'd like to tweet throughout the, uh, the lecture. So now on to the main event, Monsieur Bro began his five-year term as director and CEO of the Canada Council for the Arts on June 26, 2014. He comes to the position with a full understanding of his role, having served as vice chair of the council's board of directors from 2004 to 2014. Monsieur Bro has been active in the cultural sector for more than 30 years and has been a driving force behind a number of major projects, notably as administrative director and director general of the National Theatre School of Canada. He coordinated the ambitious project also of restoring Montreal's historic Monument National. He's held key positions in national organizations and was also a founding member and chair of Culture Montreal from 2002 to 2014. Monsieur Bro has received numerous distinctions for his commitment to the social recognition of the arts and culture, including the Order of Canada and the 2009 Keith Kelly Award for Cultural Leadership. His highly acclaimed work, No Culture, No Future, which I have a copy in my briefcase tonight, and <laughs> just so you know, I do carry it with me quite often, published in 2010, has become an important source of inspiration and hope for all of us working in arts and culture in Canada. I wanted to just re read a brief uh, section of that for you because I think that sets the tone nicely for tonight. We are more and more convinced that culture attracts, sells, brings people together, entertains, appeals, and impresses. It allows us to bridge the gap between local and international, the specific and the universal. It allows us to exchange and share, counting on the possibility of a dialogue that transcends language and imperfect translations, as my imperfect French uh, or pronunciation, as well as codes, beliefs, religions, and differences of all manner. So with that, please help me in, in welcoming Simon Bro. Bonsoir, good night. I, I wonder if I have uh, grads from McEwen and the staff of the Canada Council, I'll, I'll ask. But anyway, check because uh, over the next few years, like in many uh, important uh, institutions in Canada, there will be a renewal of staff and uh, it's a very interesting place to work, I guarantee it. So um, I always enjoy the opportunity to speak to students um, some of you are here, for careers in the arts. In fact, uh, I spent 30 years uh, in the theater school, so it's something I miss now after a year away from the school. I think this week was the graduation uh, of the students of the National Theater School, and it's something I truly miss. Uh, I used to, uh, to see many, many uh, rehearsals and shows during the day, when I was at the school, and that kind of a raw energy is something that always inspired me. So I uh, just want to, um, to remind you or to uh, tell you how uh, interesting it is right now to consider the possibility of working in the uh, art sector. Uh, it's a sector that uh, is uh, full of uh, challenges, and uh, it's a sector that is right now at a juncture, uh, and this juncture is, is about reinvention, because we know that we have been building the art sector in Canada since, uh, po since post-war, uh, since roughly 50 years, 
and uh, we did a lot of very uh, fantastic you know things but we are now in a situation where we know that what we created during the period where the basic assumption was continuous growth is now has now to be challenged questions and probably seriously reinvented the arts have never been more important to Canadians, so it's great to know that there are passionate and committed men and women like you who, who are ready to help shape the future of the arts in Canada and the future of Canada itself. As arts managers, your role is especially vital. Arts organizations need strong leadership. They are, after all, the center of our art ecology. They are at the heart of our communities the, the labs for creation, the venues for performances, the meeting places for ideas and uh, for artists' ideas and the public. But it is a challenging time to be running an arts organization. Global trends in technology and demographics are changing everything we thought we knew about how the arts are created and consumed. Managing a successful arts organization in, tw in the 21st century means more than producing high quality services and programming. It means continually striving to stay relevant and flexible in a constantly changing world. It means taking risks and being bold and adapting nimbly to the results of our experiments, however they may turn out. None of us can be masters of the future, but if we are courageous, imaginative and agile, we may be able to keep pace with the present, which, given the speed of change we are experiencing in the 21st century, is an impressive achievement for any organization. So yes, while it's a challenging time for, to be an arts manager, it is also an exciting and hopeful time. Over the course of my remarks today, I'd like to share some of my energy and hope for our world ahead. I'll talk about how the Canada Council is transforming itself to better support the arts community. And I'll speak about our ambitious vision as we approach Canada's 150th birthday in 2017, that the arts should play a key role in the reimagining of our future as a society. Finally, I will challenge you to claim this ambitious role for yourselves and for your organizations. Because to achieve this, to find a way forward, it's imperative that we consolidate our strengths, share knowledge and values, and innovate in an enlightened and courageous way. I'm going to start by jumping right into the major element of our transformation, the Council's new funding model. This is what will affect your organizations most directly and you may already have heard about it through some media report. The biggest lever the Council has to affect change is its grant programs. So it stands to reason that it's the first and largest component of our transformation. The basis of the new funding model is fewer, much fewer, and clearer granting programs and simplified process. I recently read an article that advised that before you think innovation, think simplification, and I agree. It's easier to be nimble and creatively adapt to change when you eliminate the many layers of complicated rules and procedures inherited from a long institutional history, such as the Canada Council has. The major change with the new funding model is a significant reduction in the number of granting programs from 148, actually it was 142 I taught two months ago, but we keep counting, to less than 10, less than 10. These new programs will cover all regions and all fields of professional arts practices. They will address the major issues specific to both existing arts disciplines and emerging arts form, while adhering to the Council's fundamental values and commitments. 
We will be announcing the programs, the new programs, in a few weeks, and their full guidelines will come into effect before the end of 2016, in time for our 60th anniversary. But in the meantime, I can tell you that one, will be de one program will be dedicated to Aboriginal arts and one to international outreach. I'll go into each of these uh, in more detail shortly. The baseline for the new funding model will be the current funding envelopes for our arts disciplines and multi-year commitment. In other words, everyone eligible for our current programs will continue to be eligible for the new programs and no organization will lose funding due to the implementation of the new program structure. The new funding model is not about uh, shifting money, it's about shifting from us prescribing our support to enabling artists and organizations to conduct their quest for excellence and to maximize their impact in their own terms. It's not about making applicants squeeze themselves into our const the constraints of our programs, rather it's about us, Canada Council, adapting our programs to the realities, skills, potentials, and ambitions articulated by artists and arts organizations. We are, so, we are also lightening our administrative and decision-making processes so they are less onerous on applicants. This will free them this will free them up to spend more time on their art and less on the application form. Lighter processes will also free up our program officers so they can make better use of their expertise to support and guide artists and arts organizations and build on the qualitative work done by the peer committees. The simplified model will make it easier for our staff to report on the council's impact and to articulate a national approach to developing the arts. At the same time, we are reviewing our peer assessment process to renew, to renew it, strengthen it, and make it even more effective, fair, and reflective of the arts community. We want to optimize the expertise and insight of the artists and arts professional who assess applications so that they spend more time evaluating the quality of applications and trends across the country and across disciplines and less time parsing the budget of a grant program. So as students of arts management, you can appreciate that this is a huge organizational change with implications in all, at all levels, financial, human resources, communications and information technology. It might be helpful to talk a bit about how we got to this place and what it has to do and what it has to do with the reimagining of the future. How did we get to transformation? As most innovation, the answer lies partly in our past, partly in our future. Some may say it's a bit audacious to talk about our transformation in terms of reimagining Canada's future. But in fact, the Canada Council was created to undertake such a project. 60 years ago, in the post-war era, there was a sense that Canada had come of age and that it had something unique to offer its citizens and the world. The Canada Council was formed to nurture this unique Canadian identity, its artistic expression and potential creative solutions to the issues of the times. Fast forward to now, to 2015, the arts have undergone a sea change due to the large scale impacts of technology, globalization and concerns about sustainability amongst others. Even just 10 years ago, social media was non-existent and the iPhone was still a rumor. Networked and mobile technologies have now blurred the lines between personal and professional. Art is being created 
and consumed on a myriad of platforms. Young people and new Canadians are engaging with arts, but not in traditional ways. Artists from these demographics find that their work doesn't fit the parameters offered by traditional arts funders and finding new ways to finance their work, crowdfunding, for example. Audiences that were once passive or seen to be passive now expect collaboration and active participation. Models that were once based on fixity, ownership, and authorship are being displaced by those bases on iteration, access, participation. And all this has taken place against the backdrop of a global recession and shrinking fund funding envelopes in many, area, in many areas. At the Canada Council, We've heard about the impact of these changes firsthand from the artists and arts organizations we serve. We've heard from them through consultations in recent years as part of our strategic planning process. We've heard from them through a series of discipline-specific consultations held across the country over the past year. And we will be posting in a few days a report on what we heard on our website. Finally, we hear about these impacts from our clients every day on an ongoing basis through our close connections with the community. This includes regular conversations we have in our peer assessment committees, which are, as you may know, made up of, diverse, of a diverse range of artists and arts professionals from every corner of Canada. We have heard their concerns and we are acting on them. For the Council, these changes aren't just a problem fix, a problem to fix. They present an opportunity for an expanded role for the arts and society. In this world made smaller by technology and globalization, expression and identity are as important as ever. We see evidence of this in international conversations about the importance of cultural citizenship and a rights-based approach to arts and culture. Such movements have their roots in an increasingly diverse intercultural populations which set the tone for our redefining identity and building cohesion. In other words, in this fragmented world, People are seeking opportunities to connect, express new experiences, belong, and understand each other. The arts provide these opportunities. Another international conversation that I've been involved with is around sustainability. Last March, I spoke in Bilbao, Spain, at an international conference on Agenda 21 for Culture. Agenda 21 for Culture is a movement to ensure that culture is considered at the local and regional levels in all discussions, policies, and initiatives related to sustainability. After all, how can we decide what type of world we want to live in, what we need to preserve without the imagination and creativity of our artists? It's my personal conviction one that is increasingly shared across all sectors of society, that we need artists to interpret and decode the state of our world. We need them to point us in a direction of hope. So given all these tremendous forces of change and new directions for the arts, it became obvious that the council needed to change. We could not remain Real, relevant in the 21st century by merely continuing to do the same thing with the same means, or even with greater means for that matter. The questions we ask ourselves were, how can we engage with this new world? How can we live up to the ambitious goals that led to the creation of the Canada Council? How can we meet our responsibility as a publicly funded agency to benefit Canadians? How can we, with finite resources, scale up our impact on the arts and on society? 
I'm proud to say that the Council chose to embrace these challenges as an opportunity for innovation, an opportunity to transform, to become more responsive and resilient in a world where the only guarantee is change. Earlier, I introduced you to some elements of our new funding models. We're currently working on its design, and in June, when we will announce the new programs, we'll have more details on how the new programs will encourage innovation, creativity, engage organizations, and a stronger arts sector. In the meantime, let me elaborate on a few ways the new funding model will help us to reimagine the future. Let me start with our Aboriginal program. The Council has had an Aboriginal Arts Office with dedicated, pro dedicated program for 20 years now. We're currently evaluating these programs and already seeing tremendous results from this support. An emerging generation of artists is gaining an international reputation for their innovative and cutting edge work. The power of their voices has played a huge role in energizing, inspiring, and activating the imagination of indigenous youth in Canada. This past year alone, several of our country's top prizes in the arts have been awarded to Aboriginal artists. Novelist Thomas King won the Governor General's Award for Fiction. Visual artist Nadia Mir was awarded the prestigious Sobe Prize and Inuit throat singer Tanya Tagak won the Polaris Prize for the best Canadian album of the year. Yet, despite these successes, we can do better. This is a pivotal time in history when the relationship between Aboriginal peoples of this land and the Canadian state is reaching a turning point. The role of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit artists is enhancing opportunities for reconciliation in building self-agency, community, and identity, and in sharing experiences and aspirations cannot be understated. As David Garneau, an Aboriginal artist, scholar, and curator recently said, we are moving from recognition to ignition. Our new dedicated program for Aboriginal arts will take a unique self-determined approach. This means it will be guided by Aboriginal artists' values, worldviews, administered by staff of Aboriginal heritage, assessed by Aboriginal arts professional, and its impacts reported on in an Aboriginal cultural and artistic context. I should add that the Aboriginal artists will, of course, be, elig be eligible to all of our other programs. One of the other programs in our new funding model will have an international focus. In our global reality, the presence of Canadian arts on the international scene is critical to the artistic and financial success of our artists and arts organization. The Council has just completed a three-year strategic investment in which we've doubled our investment in international market market access from five to 10 millions. Our activities over this period have yielded great results and have given us a new insight about what artists and arts organizations need to be successful in the international arena. But again, we want to do better. We need to have our artists represented in global networks, collaboration and exchanges. This will strengthen Canada's global influence and ensure it is even more recognized worldwide for its creativity, excellence, diversity, and innovation. Outside of these dedicated funding programs, and there will be more than two, obviously, there are other transformational waves rolling through our work, pushing it forward and giving it greater impact. One of these waves is equity. In recent years, we've made targeted investment in cultural diverse communities and in the deaf and disability arts communities. What's more, 
we've woven these values of equity into the fabric of our organization through internal practices, program delivery, and knowledge sharing. Why is equity so important in our reimagined future? I believe the arts and culture are essential components of any journey to empower people and for communities to reinvent themselves. Cultural expression and participation are key to countering discrimination and alienation. What's more, marginalized, marginalized spaces are often the sites for artistic innovation, think disability arts. They often open doors to diverse practices, such as urban, urban arts. They often initiate critical conversations that bridge discourse between established and emerging artists. Marginalized voices need to be encouraged and heard from the arts to truly reflect the range of excellence and to affect societal change. And that's why I feel so strongly about another transformative wave at the Council, which is public engagement in the arts. This is a key part of our mandate as public funder of the arts. It is what reinforces the demographic legitimacy, legitimacy of our work. Public engagement in the arts is much more than increasing ticket sales or creating a market for the arts. It's about making the arts part of everyday lives of all Canadians, whatever their origin, ability, or level of participation. For me, it comes down to embracing the values of cultural democracy. This means authentic participation, real exchange, deep and significant engagement with the arts in its most diverse, highest, freest, and richest manifestations. In other words, as we reimagine our future, we have to fully empower every Canadian. Every citizen must have the opportunity to see hear, experience, participate in the expression of the culture or cultures that define them. The Canada Council has always funded activities and projects to promote public engagement. Many of the organizations that you are affiliated with have done exciting and innovative work in this regard. But the Council, but for the Council, that's no longer enough. At this point in time, we must walk the talk in terms of public engagement. We must embrace the public considerations and responsibilities that come with our public funder. I'd like to share a recent statement made by the chair of the Arts Council of England, Sir Balzagitz, that mirrors precisely how I feel about the council's engagement with Canada's diverse public. He said, and I quote, when we invest public money in the arts and culture, it must be for the benefit of all the public. We will continue to put public engagement at the forefront in our, uh, all of our conversations within and beyond the arts sector. I've been very active since I began my term speaking out at events like this and those beyond of the arts community on the role of the arts in society. As part of this work, we are now speaking more directly and boldly about the value of the arts and the impact of public funding of the arts on the individuals and communities. We are increasingly reaching out and making ourselves present on social media and other platforms where Canadians gather to invoke to and support with persuasive evidence whenever possible a much broader discussion on the role of the arts in society. For example, we've started to share a clear stats and stories about the economic and social benefits of the arts, and we hope that we can pick up and make, and make them viral. We want to convince people that art is serious business for individuals and for society, for the present and for our future. We want people to access the unlimited, renewable resource that is all around us, the ability to create, dream, imagine, and reinvent our future. In Canada, 671,000 cultural workers, including 140,000 professional artists, 
contribute to our social, human, and economic development. Culture's contribution to the GDP is close to $50 billion. We want Canadians to understand that investing in the creativity is investing is a path to prosperity. This is, of course, is just one initiative. At the same time, we will optimize those non-granting programs at the Canada Council that give Canadians more access to arts in their daily lives and give Canada greater influence on the world scene. This includes for us the Art Bank, our many prizes and awards for excellence, the Canadian Commission for UNESCO that is housed at the Canada Council, the Musical Instrument Bank, and the Public Lending Right Program that is compensating authors for the presence of their book in public libraries. Transformation from a leadership point of view, and that will be my conclusion. Now, because you are arts manager in the making, or confirmed arts manager, I want to talk about an aspect of our transformation that excites me as a leader. It's something that has made the council the envy of many of our fellow funding agencies around the world. It's the fact that we've been proactive. The fact that we seized upon the huge changes affecting us as an opportunity to transform has made us agents in our own change. We've been able to transform ourselves to suit our own priorities and our own strategic ambition, not as a reaction to budget cuts or policy decrees from the government of the day. What's more, our transformation and the new funding model is a way for us to bring the issue of public funding of the arts to the forefront in a way that is positive, visionary, and future-oriented. This can only strengthen our case for stable and enhanced funding. The renewal and the impact we anticipate will give us more credibility to make ourselves, not only the Canada Council, but the arts in general, part of the key conversations on the future of our country. Above all, by changing now, by being proactive now, we are the masters of our reorganization, our reinvention. We can leverage our current position as trusted, relevant organization to reinvent ourselves in a way that honors our history, values, and expertise, and in a way that heralds a new era in public support of the arts in Canada. Contrast this position of strength with the experience of many of our colleagues internationally. In recent years, several fellow arts council worldwide were forced to change due to financial and political pressures. They didn't have the luxury of reflective change. In many cases, they were severely marginalized, drastically cut, and downgraded. This is not our reality. This will not be our fate. I hope it's obvious from my remarks that our new programs, our transformation, isn't first and foremost about money. And it is not about change for change's sake. It's about aspirations, ideas, and vision. And it is anchored in the conviction that with these aspirations, ideas, and vision firmly in place, we are in a better position to give meaningful financial support to the artists and arts organizations of this country. We can better make the case for the people and the government of Canada for greater responsibilities in delivering public services that reflect our values. So now, I want to think about the changes you're seeing around you. How can you seize the opportunity to introduce innovation in your future or current work as an arts administrator? We are all looking for solutions to similar issues. We are all introducing innovations to reach new audience, to embrace diversity, and to build communities around the arts. We are all adjusting to new technologies and new ways of creating, producing, and presenting arts. In effect, we are all part of a larger project to reinvent ourselves, to remain relevant, 
and resilient without abandoning our fundamental values and principles. I am convinced that by innovating, by including and celebrating our different backgrounds, abilities, and technologies, by stretching our definition of who we are as a people, we will discover more about ourselves and all that we have in common. Renewing the Keynesian cultural fabric in this way will yield innovative thinking, artistic opportunities, and engaged communities. As we prepare to celebrate our sesquicentennial, so difficult to say in English, some may say Canada is a more pessimistic, if not cynical, country. But I believe we are, more than ever, hungry for big ideas and vision. We have an opportunity to reimagine Canada's stories today, a story told in many voices. One that highlights for ourselves and the world the remarkable diversity and creativity that defines us as Canadian. Rather than a time for nostalgia, nostalgia, it's a time to reimagine the future, a time to dream of the extraordinary story we want to tell when we celebrate 200th anniversary. I invite you all to continue engaging in these conversations, both here and far beyond these walls, in your role as arts managers and arts leaders in the broader community. Keep the discussion alive about how we can best work together to make the arts an even more important of Canada's future. Thank you. Wonderful, very inspiring, and uh, gets me feeling excited about the future of arts in this country and the role that it will play.